The Miami Heat and Toronto Raptors have been two of the NBA's most captivating teams this season, capable of delivering rollicking thrills on any given night. Last night was not one of those nights. If you want to be kind, you could say it was a defensive battle. The teams combined for a total of 160 points, which would be fine if this was 1998, but feels startling when it's 2020, and the Bucks and Rockets are each averaging 120 a game all by themselves. Some of what happened last night can be credited to Miami coach Eric Spolstra, who had been, let's just say, displeased with his team's effort in a game against Washington earlier this week, and had just put the Heat through a two and a half hour practice focusing explicitly on defense. Miami came out last night heavy on 2-3 zone, and bothered Toronto shooters all night. But also the Raptors were dealing with the wee little problem of not being able to hit the broad side of a barn even if you spotted them a two-headed cow head start. Seriously, the Raptors were 6 of 42 from behind the three-point line. 6 of 42. Toronto had come into this game ranked fourth in the league in three-point percentage. Last night's game was so bad that all by itself it knocked them down to seventh. Of course, the Raptors still battling a fleet of injuries. Neither Pascal Siakam nor Marcus Gasol are particularly close to returning. And things didn't get better in the third quarter when Kyle Lowry rolled his ankle. As for the Heat, they did get a nice little boost from Tyler Hero in the fourth to help them put the game away. Although even the final seconds became a bit of a farce when players played a little hot potato, not wanting to be responsible for a turnover on the shot clock violation. It was ridiculous enough that our friend, NBA Twitter aficionado, Worldwide Wob, who likes to call this phenomenon the Balbonic Plague, begged Heat beat writer Tim Reynolds to, quote, pretty please ask Spo why he was laughing in the final seconds when the Heat were dribbling the ball out. We know why, just want to see if he admits it. So Tim actually asked Spolstra about it in the official post-game presser because that's just what kind of night it was, and here was Spo's response. What was going on out there? Yeah, I also don't think it's that big of a deal if you shoot it. It's, it that's disrespectful. I don't know when that started, but you have to eat the ball and take a turnover or else you're totally disrespecting the other team. People get all fired up about all the wrong things in this league. I had to explain to Bam that that goes as a team turnover. It's not your individual turnover because I've been on his about turning the ball over. <laughs> so he looked at me and laughed about it, but uh, that doesn't go to, to him. Not a bad point by Spo, by the way, on the whole end of game shot disrespect thing. Spolstra also strong last night on Jimmy Butler, who, like nearly everyone on the floor, was struggling offensively. Butler took only 10 shots, and he made just two of them. But Spolstra noted that, quote, I think that's what young players should learn coming into the league of what a max player actually means. It's not about whatever 2K numbers you can get. It's about how your team functions and whether they are winning because of the player. Indeed, the Heat did, in fact, win the game last night, which in the end is all anyone is going to remember about it. I mean, I hope that's all anyone remembers because it sure wasn't pretty. So, Matt, I I'm going to let both teams off the hook here a little bit, little post-holiday doldrums games, right? But with the trade deadline coming up fast next month, when you see this Heat team out right now, what do you think they want to do with this roster? First of all, they got the best city advantage that those, <laughs> those South Beat Knight are undefeated. Uh, so that could be uh, attributed to the Lowell's. But uh, Miami's in a particular awkward situation because they're playing really well. Yeah, I think they surprised a lot of people, but uh, I think a lot of people still feel they're one piece away from really contending in the East. Mm -hmm. But they have a lot of good young core players. So what do you do? Do you, do you go after a veteran point guard? Do you, you, know, do you find another uh, wing? They're in a tough situation, but it'll be interesting to see what they do towards the deadline because, I, like I said, I think they're one piece away from really contending. You want to see them get someone, right? I would love to see them get someone. Yeah, yeah I mean, it, it, they have been a team that has been cited time and time again that if Oklahoma City wants to get off Chris Paul's contract, if Toronto decides it wants to turn the page and deal Kyle Lowry, who got a one-year extension, I think with right. the understanding that that became a more attractive piece to a team like Miami, they can do it. And they also have the ingredients to make a trade, and it's been interesting. The fact that that young backcourt we talk about, Kendrick Nungan, Duncan Robinson, said, well, you know, guess what? Those guys now are on rookie-controlled contracts, right. and if you're looking to acquire an all-star or an all-star caliber point guard, what do teams want back? Oh, an interesting young player who's on a very valued contract. Right. To say nothing of you know, Justice Winslow, who's right. got another year and a half and at a very good number. So they're a really, I think they're the most interesting team to watch going into the trade deadline season. Now, here's what you need to remember, though, about them going into the deadline. I do not see them in any way acquiring a player who has salary still on his ledger mm -hmm. into that 2021 mm -hmm. 
free agency season because yep. as we've talked about a lot, summer. this coming summer, we're not expecting a ton of big free agency movement. The following summer is going to feel more like this past mm -hmm. summer, and the Heat are definitely a team with, to your point, Matt, they feel like they got Miami advantage. They got the, the wind starting to roll in a little bit. They're going to be a very attractive free agent destination, and they don't want to tie up their books. So that's something to keep in mind, too, as the next month rolls on. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.